Time to rest, take care of yourself. It's hard to do sometimes. Believe me, I know. <laughs> I, I 
have a lot besides my work going on, but I think you're in Suzanne, she's not able to be here this morning. She's still not up to um to getting out of the house. Can't get can't get out of the house right now, but um but also remember I think about too is I travel people constantly in a hurry, constantly rushing. They go up and stop at a stop sign. They go up and stop at the traffic the traffic. First you get nowhere. Take time. Take time. Take time. Let God hear that small whisper. Take time to be still. Because God's there too. Even if you missed an angry crowd or a busy crowd, there's one door which we accomplish. God hears those whispers. Take time to be still. As we go on, um, we have a prayer request here. why God heals some more than others, God, but, but God's there to help us all. It was um, saying is that if, if the storm arises, either God will give us the strength to go through the storm, or calm the storm. And either way, yes, ma'am. Um, June Holland, um, she has been diagnosed with breast cancer, and she's been Checking on and seeing how the vacation 
first come home in th around Thanksgiving. So I want to put his wife, Kathleen, came in her list because she's been going for a year, almost a year. We still out there. Yes, I will. Um, <laughs> being by herself up in New York and with her two little girls. And it just, uh, I, know, I know it's hard when all of them, Teresa came and, and Amber and all, but uh, just as they kind of go on their countdown, Let's do that also. Let's remember to keep each other in the church. And um, as we go through, because great is our God, and He does watch over and take care of us. He gives us strength, protects us at times that our hearts listen to scorn. I think in their minds that there are times He has protected us when we're not even aware of protecting us. Times when we were held up in trying to hit the traffic, see a bad accident, when we spared from it. Be thankful for it at the times that God doesn't watch out for us. Nobody else is going to that. But we do come to you now. That we know how great you are, how great God's protection you are to us. We also remember the ones who are traveling this week. Pray to keep them safe and make them turn back to us safely. As we go about our day and our week, remember the ones who are mentioned. We've heard the petitions. We've heard the, the praises. Most of help us to remember to every day. Thank you for the breath and for the day you give us, for the strength you give us to get through the day, and also for the strength that you give us in the books. And allow us and allow us to be able to help others in the ways they need. As we and as we see in each other, as we remember to say, hey, God loves you. And God cares for you. Just thank for this day.
those of you that don't know, this is Autumn. She's, uh, we found her on the side of the road, we picked her up. Yeah, yeah, I told her that she would come along to church, but she had to sing. But, uh, she's, uh, she's, uh, my girlfriend, and she's been, uh, she's from my high school area, so we've known each other for a while now. Can all y'all hear me? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sing a song. It's the uh, Chris Tomlin, "Amazing Grace." My chains are gone. Most y'all probably know it. The choir has sang it before, but it's a uh, really beautiful song. So. Thank you. 
Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we read about a man named Jairus. He lived in the town of Capernaum, and he came to Jesus with a very special request. This is his story. Jairus was an important man in his community, a ruler of the synagogue. But today, that did not mean much to him. For Jairus and his family, only one thing was important. Their 12-year-old daughter was seriously ill, and they knew she was dying. There was only one hope. In the town of Capernaum, Jesus of Nazareth had healed sick people miraculously by the power of God. Jairus went looking for Jesus. My little daughter is dying, but come and put your hand on her, and she will live. There was also a woman in Capernaum who suffered from bleeding, not just once a month, but all the time. In Jewish religious law, this made her unclean. Anyone she touched also became unclean, even someone who sat on the same stool. Jesus could heal her. Of that, there was no doubt. But always he was surrounded by crowds, and if the people saw who it was, they would shout at her and drive her away. And Jesus, how could he touch her if she made him unclean? But perhaps she could touch him, just at the edge of his cloak. No one would know. Jesus felt the power had gone out of him. Who touched me? The disciples objected. Lord, everybody's touching you. I touched you, she said. Daughter, said Jesus, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. For the woman it was wonderful, but for Jairus the delay was serious. At that moment Jairus got the news. His daughter, his little girl, was dead. It was too late. If only they had not stopped for the woman. But Jesus could not be put off. Do not be afraid. Only believe. She will be made well. They must go on. Jesus took three disciples, Peter, James, and John. Already the professional mourners were at the house, weeping and wailing. Jesus objected. Make room. Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. The professional mourners knew the girl was dead, and the more noise they made, the better they would be paid. They started to laugh at him. Jesus must be out of his mind. Who did he think he was? Jesus ignored them. When Jairus came in, he saw for himself. His daughter was dead. But Jesus spoke to the body as if she could hear him. Talitha kumi. Little girl, I say to you, get up. Jairus had received his miracle. His daughter was alive. And the woman, too, could begin a new life because of Jesus. Great to be back. Good to see everyone here this morning. Take your bullet insert and have a few fill-ins for you. Just a couple of things. I want to thank Brian for, for filling in. It's not as easy as you might think to uh, stand up here, and uh, so we appreciate him doing that. We also thank Autumn for uh, helping. Um, if I understand correctly, Autumn was the influence that got Brian into church. And so Brian and then his whole family. So Autumn, thank you for your witness and for uh, what you have done. Uh, Brian is an integral part of ministry here. The mission moment we saw, it was just in the corner and they didn't make a very big deal of it, but that football game goes on on Saturdays only a few 
miles from here in West Baltimore. That is a West Baltimore outreach of the North American Missions Board, and we support them through our uh, gifts to the uh, cooperative program. So you have a part in that. And it did my heart good to see that there are some young men in Baltimore that are learning the ways of God, they're learning the ways of teamwork, they're learning the ways of getting along with, if you want to call the opposite team on a football field, your enemy, in some ways they are, um, but to learn a whole different philosophy than what their community is teaching them. So I'm thankful for that and I wanted to share that with you. Um, we're going to be reading some scripture this morning and the story of Jer uh, Jairus. Uh, and uh, if you have your own Bible, turn to Mark chapter 5. If you're using a few Bible, uh, the brown one is page 747. And I need to turn on my microphone. Thank you, John. And uh, if you uh, have the Burgundy Pew Bible, it's in the neighborhood there. So you'll find it in this Mark chapter 5. We have a lot of folks out today, but um, I am always encouraged at the business meetings and at the council meetings when John tells us the activity on YouTube. All of these sermons, if you're not aware of it, all of these sermons, I think we have, what do we have, about 100, 150 of them out there, John? Something like that? Uh, over 200. I'm over 200 point. sermons out there that are being listened to on a regular basis. So the outreach of Elkridge Baptist Church is going out, uh, even though our numbers are few here uh, in, the, in the four walls, the, min the ministry and the uh, mission of Elkridge Baptist Church is reaching out. If you found your place, we're going to read, starting at verse 22, I'm reading out of the NIV. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been a subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt her in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went to, into where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say unto you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Let's pray. Now, Lord, we pray that you would add your blessing to the reading of your word and that we can get something out of this scripture for our lives today. In your name we ask. Amen. Jairus was a very 
important man in the community. At that time, politics and religion in Jerusalem were intermingled. So someone who is in the religious ruling class was also part of the political scene. Now, Rome was in charge overall, but the local politics was left to the religious leaders. And as long as they at least paid lip service to Rome and kept the peace, the Roman officials let them rule uh, in Jerusalem. So politics and religion were combined. He was an important man. Today we have secret service for our uh, uh, president and vice president. They had the temple guard. The temple had its own police force, if you will. Jairus was accustomed to the respect and the importance of his position as a leader in the community. Now this morning we want to focus on Jairus on a couple of things that I, I found fascinating and I think you'll find helpful. He had three opportunities to give up. Now, I, I entitled this Calling the Game. I originally thought of strike three, strike three year out. And just a couple of things made me uh, focus on calling the game. Because in, in calling the game, and our, our very own umpire back here, if I, if, if, if I uh, stray a little bit, uh, straighten me out later. Uh, but um, in baseball, you get three strikes. You had, Jairus had three opportunities to give up and just say, forget about it. Now, in baseball, a determined batter, if he can keep getting a piece of that ball, it's called a foul ball, and although it doesn't get him onto base, it does keep him in the batter's box. So as long as he keeps getting a piece of that, of that baseball, he has another shot. And Jairus... He had three opportunities to strike out. He had three opportunities to walk away. October 14, 2003, eighth inning, game six, a critical play. It's a Cubs-Marlins game. Foul ball is hit, and Cubs player Moshi, I believe it's Moshi, Alou, goes up for the catch. He was trying to catch the foul tip. And he goes up for it and just about had it. And a sticky fingered fan reached out and grabbed that ball. The baseball aficionados know exactly what I'm talking about. It's on YouTube. It's, it's an amazing, amazing thing. Now, if Lou had caught the ball, the Cubs might have pulled off the win. But spectator interference messed up that play. And they went back and forth whether uh, that the guys, the, the Interfere should have been thrown out of the game, how to, a bunch of different things. But the bottom line is, Alou thought he had the catch. He went up to get it and put it away, and it was taken away from him. In our foul one this morning, Jairus had things fairly under control. He could do nothing, the doctors could do no nothing. But he knew that this Jesus had been healing other people. And so he sought out to find Jesus and get this taken care of. Now, he humbled himself. This was not easy for a leader of the synagogue. In fact, he put himself at risk, his position. He pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter has died. Please come and put your hands on her so she would be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. In one of the versions he said, take, Jesus said, take me to your home. Again, Jairus was a big shot in Jerusalem. He was a guy that knew how to get things done and if he personally couldn't get it done, he knew how to get the right people to get things done. And so they were on their way. His daughter was sick. He found Jesus. Jesus agreed to come. The plan is going just like he wanted to. And then 
someone interferes. Verse 25 in our reading. And a woman was there who had been the subject of bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body she was freed from her suffering. All of us, all of us have been sick and we've been miserable and you know there are two stages, you're afraid you're going to die and then the second stage you're afraid you're not going to die. And, and once you hit that, you're afraid you're not going to die. Uh, you, the healing is right around the corner. And then you wake up, and you feel better, and you have some strength, and you have a little bit of an appetite, and you're able to start getting back. Well, that, she had that feeling. She said, you know what? It's going to be all right. This worked out. Now, I do not believe that the robe of Jesus had any magical power. There are those that they, they have the, the uh, shawl of Turin or something that was supposed to lay over his face. And there are some uh, shucksters who will cut you off a piece of that and send, mail it to you and you put it on your boo-boo and it's all better. Yeah, I don't believe that stuff. Jesus himself, when he talked to her, what did he say in verse 34? He said, daughter, your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Now, she didn't sit at home with her faith. She put feet on her faith. She put go in the gospel, if you please. She just didn't sit around waiting for something to happen. She made something happen. I remember when our son Tim was impaled on his, in his lower back on a construction accident in the house we were working on. Uh, I got there, ambulances, the streets shut off, couldn't figure out what was happening, and unfortunately, the house we were working on was the center of attraction, and they loaded him into the ambulance. I know, I'm a Yankee, it's ambulance where I came from, not, not ambulance, but that, hey, <laughs> I got a thumbs up in the back there. But anyway, they loaded him in there, and they're going to take him down to shock trauma and say, Pop, jump in here and we'll let you ride with us. So we're on our way. I knew he was hurt badly. He had fallen back. A porch had collapsed on him. He fell back. And a square porch railing, one inch square, went into his back. So you cut a one inch square, three to four inches deep in your back. And you're going to have a little bit of bleeding. He was bleeding. So we're on our way. I, on the way, I was just so frustrated. Here we are, lights and sirens. And from Brooklyn uh, to uh, shock trauma is not that far, five, six, seven miles. But with the traffic and the lights, people wouldn't yield to pull over. They would just stop. They're in the way. Uh, the driver was fairly calm. I was not, uh, I wasn't yelling on the outside, but boy, I was angry on the inside. How much more do you think I would have been aggravated if the people that were helping him and able to take care of my son had decided to pull into the McDonald's drive through and order some lunch? Then it got sidetracked. How about if they'd seen a homeless person on the side of the road with a cut on their finger and said, you know, we're going to stop and uh, stitch, stitch this old boy up here. I would have been livid. Well, Jerry's was livid. Here, he is an important man. He's a big shot. So in, uh, the players here, we have an innocent child. We have a big shot, politically, religious, one of the town fathers, if you please, pillars in the community, and an outcast. Jarius, Jairus had the authority to have the temple guard take that woman outside of the city gates and stone her for even being in the crowd. Because anyone she touched, they were considered ceremonially unclean. You heard him say in the clip, if she sat on a stool and someone else sat on it, ceremonial, they were unclean. She was not even supposed to be in the crowd. She had transgressed. And I, 
I'm sure he was livid. You know, all of us have outside distractions, but then it gets worse. Sometimes we have interference by more bad news. More bad news from home. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Have you ever had anyone where it just felt like they were pouring it on? Putting salt in that wound a little bit? Uh, I used to have, operative word is used to have, a handyman that just loved to bring me good news, uh, bad news, excuse me. Love to bring me bad news. It, it's just, it, it's almost like he woke up early to find bad news, and if he couldn't find bad news in one of my properties or the neighborhood, he'd tell me about bad news on the news. It just, then he could brighten up a whole room by leaving it. And, but you ever have anybody like that in your life? Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Now, there's something critical in that statement. They didn't say the master. They didn't say the messiah. They didn't say the, the rabbi. Rabbi and teacher are somewhat interchanged. But basically, hey, this guy that you were having come, don't bother him anymore because he can't do anything about it. She's dead. They were not believers. His house was not a believing household. Now, they were religious, but they were not believers. And then the third thing we see, interference from mocking family and friends. And I'll tag on the end of that, professionals. The professional mourners, like we saw in the clip, they're making fun of them. Just keep in mind that professionals built the Titanic and amateurs built the ark. Many times the professionals, not all the time, but sometimes the professionals and the ones in the clip were worried about their payday because they had been hired to make a big fuss about the death of this girl. And boy, I mean, she couldn't have even hardly been cold, and they were there for their payday. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went into them and said, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead. But they laughed at him. Now the King James puts a little more light on that. It says they laughed him to scorn. Have you ever uh, worked things out? and had someone or something else undo it? Have you ever had your plans go from bad to worse? Have you ever had a friend or a family member or even a professional laugh, mock, or roll their eyes at you? A couple of observations here. We have a 12-year-old girl who was ill and we have a 12-year-old illness. It kind of jumped out at me this week. 12-year-old girl and a 12-year-old illness. Now, the, the two things seem to be unrelated, but I think maybe there's a little bit more than meets the eye going on here. See, in the Bible, the number 12 is a symbol of faith, the church, and divine rule. The number 12 is featured prominently in the Bible. The Old Testament book of Genesis states there were 12 sons of Jacob, and those 12 sons formed the 12 tribes of Israel. The New Testament tells us that Jesus had, how many apostles? Their disciples, 12. Bible numerology, number 12, signifies what is finished or completed, forming a harmonious, perfect entity. Both of these ladies, the young lady, and the other lady were given back their lives. The youngest one, figurative, or an actual, uh, she was given back, literally, and then the other was figuratively given back her life. See, new life emerges when you meet with Jesus. For the little girl, 12 years, and her parents, 12 years of joy and happiness had ended. I'm sure they remembered all the good times as any parent would. 
and then she was gone. But because of Jesus, she had a new beginning. The woman, 12 years of suffering, rejection, loneliness, poverty, and that ended. And new life emerged when she met Jesus. Second common connection. Jesus referred to both of these females as daughter. If you read one of the other accounts in the Gospels, the young girl is referred to as daughter, and the woman with the issue of blood was referred to as daughter. See, we cannot always comprehend everything that Jesus is doing, but we can be assured that he loves us as if we were his only daughter, his only <coughs> child. See, both of these individuals had a commonality. Both of them were dead. The young girl was literally dead. The woman, it was just a matter of time she'd given up hope. I'm sure there are folks here or folks listening on, on YouTube that in their life, in their world, hope is dead. Might be a relationship, might be a marriage, might be finances, might be health. Might be a career, it might be family. It's just, it's dead. It's, it, you cannot see any way that this can come back. But we need to remember the words that Jairus heard from Jesus. The Amplified says it this way, Do not be afraid, only keep on believing in me and my power. The message says it this way. Don't listen to them. Just trust me. You might be going through something right now. <laughs> Hope is absolutely <coughs> gone. You have no idea, no way of turning it around. There's nothing in your power. You've tried everything and nothing can make it turn around. Listen to all those people out there. Take it to Jesus. Jesus has the ability to make things happen. Let's all stand together. We're going to have a song of invitation. If you want to have some counseling, if you have a need in your heart, if you want to pray, I have one of our, one of our uh, deacons here that can, can pray with you if that's what you want. Are we going to sing or are we going to listen? Going to listen. Okay. Let's, let's all uh, just stand quietly. Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. That we've heard your word, Father. That we can apply it into our own lives, Father, and spread your gospel throughout the world. We're going to take these tithes and these offerings that we bring to the storehouse that you may further your, your world around. Lord, we just thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
our tradition here at Elk Ridge to have communion the first Sunday of every month. For those who are not members, we uh, practice open communion. That is, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you to the Lord's table with us. We use as a reference for this ceremony, the sacrament, if you please, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul the Apostle says, For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took. had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And Brother Lee, we can ask you to return thanks for the cup. Dear Father Lord, thank you for your mind. We know that this is just a big reminder of that, Father. We hope you all be a blessing to us. Always give thanksgiving to you. in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> same manner also he took the cup and when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you do show forth the lord's death until he come lord we are thankful for the sacrament that you have given us to observe your sacrifice on the cross we pray that we will live every day in our best effort to be worthy of you. In your name we ask. Amen. When your body comes. 
this one. Thank you.